It's the second day of the Pengasin Energy and Labor Summit with the theme, Energy Transition and its Effects on the Workforce in Nigeria's Oil and Gas Sector. And senior staff workers in the energy sector are gathered for the event. Meli Kolokiari. The conversation quickly moves to one of the major issues plaguing the sector, crude oil theft. The current situation of theft and our bundle actions you know, is very difficult to take the next step. And I'm happy to also share with you today that monumental progress has been achieved. And I can tell you in the next uh, uh, not long while, in a couple of days or probably maximum a week, a number of our pipeline assets will come back on stream. In his keynote address, the chief executive of the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission informs that the gas flare commercialization program has been relaunched in line with the national commitment to net zero carbon emissions. Comrades, in his commitment to optimization of Nigerian gas resources, the federal government declared gas as transition fuel towards a low carbon future, which further re Force the fact that Nigeria is more of a gas-rich nation than oil-rich nation. For him, please, as he comes up. For the national president of Pengasin, political leaders must make sacrifices and cut in the cost of governance before asking Nigerians to sacrifice. Our leaders must lead by example. Today, if you check the budget that was just passed, there's what they call service-wide vote. The service-wide vote today is going to three trillion naira. The service wide vote is where you draw mo money from when, I mean, uh, the accounting system of service wide vote is questionable. Today, we still live in profligacy. Today, go to the various states and see what our governors are doing. They cannot tell us that we are passing through austerity. They cannot tell us that they need our help. But they are still living business as usual. The Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission also hinted that it will soon commence mini bids of seven offshore blocks of gas to beef up the nation's revenue and deepen domestic gas utilization. And now for our first conversation, we're still talking the oil and gas here. Now let's talk to. A heavyweight uh, Nigeria now recently received the national honor CON by President Muhammadu Buhari. We have engineer Dr. Emeka Okwosa, Group CEO, Chairman, All Serve Limited, join us uh, via Zoom. Great to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Uh, um and thank you for having me on the program. Yes, well, first of all, uh, congratulations uh, on that award. Uh, I'm sure you must feel uh, quite late to getting that award. Uh, but now let me follow up with uh, the, the report we just uh, listened to now. We're seeing the NNPC there limited assuring us that uh, they have nipped uh, oil theft in the bud at this point, and we should expect more production, and we should expect to profit more from oil. What do you think? Thank you very much. Um, of course, uh, in the past uh, month, the issue of uh, oil theft and reduction in our total production uh, as a country has uh, come to the fore. Uh, but let's not forget that uh, this issue has been an ongoing issue for quite a while. And um, a lot of uh, producing companies and the service companies and the entire country were all impacted. Uh, but it's clear, I mean, from what the uh, group CEO of NNPC Limited has just said, that uh, NNPC, together with the uh, security agencies and other stakeholders, are uh, doing a lot to bring all this under control. Um, it doesn't make any sense for us as an oil and gas producing country, and particularly oil in this case, to not be able to take advantage of the fact that oil price is uh, high, high, higher than what it is normally, uh, you know, at. So uh, for us not to be taking advantage of that is uh, is not the best for the country. Um, so I believe that the actions, current actions, being taken uh, by NMPC right now, together with uh, the security agencies and, like I said, other stakeholders will make a difference. We need to bring our production up. We need to go back to a minimum what our quota is uh, as far as uh, OPEC 
uh, granted quota for Nigeria. Thank you. Uh, what else do you think uh, the NNPC Limited should be looking to add to actually make sure that we end oil theft in Nigeria? Uh, just like um, I just listened to the group CEO of NNPC, uh, Melekere, say, um, NNPC is moving in the right direction. But if I may add, I would say that definitely what is important is to go to the root cause of this issue. It is important to be sure what is causing it, who are the players in this uh, issue, and then how do we go about dealing with it. The issue of getting involved, uh, getting the security agencies involved, is a no-brainer. Definitely, you cannot enforce without uh, interfacing very well with security agencies, whether it's the army or the police or uh, the civil defense. Uh, what have you, basically? Uh, of course, the Navy, uh, and I can say clearly the Air Force, we need to get to the root of it. Now, the other issue is total engagement of the communities. Um, we get involved a lot in the building and maintenance of pipelines. I've been doing this since 1995, and we've operated a lot in the Niger Delta, so we are quite well versed in uh, issues that concern uh, oil production, oil transportation, as well as uh, the current issue around the oil theft. When you involve the communities, you are dealing with the issues at the root. Communities can give you the first line of support and first line of information management. It is important. It's also important that the producers uh, huddle together with uh, NAPC Limited, huddle together with the upstream regulatory uh, uh, commission and be able to come up with clear, uh, you know, steps that you can say are sustainable. Because it's not just about solving the problem for today; it is about solving it permanently. Um, it is important that we address it like this. Right, and we, and we got that uh, news uh, yesterday about the NLNG there declaring force majeure. Uh, saying they cannot uh, honor the uh, contracts at this point due to the flooding uh, that they, they experience uh, with their uh, equipments there. But how big uh, of an impact is this for the industry, for our plants? You know, we've been talking about exporting uh, gas to, to Europe. How, how much of a blow is this? Oh, definitely uh, it's a big blow. First of all, from the point of view of uh, national economy, uh, it's a big blow because Nigeria needs all it can get to be able to run its economy. And uh, you may wish to know that uh, a big chunk of our revenue comes from uh, the export of oil as well as gas. Now, to, 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 to look at what has just happened with NLNG declaring the first measure, obviously uh, it's been in the news in the past couple of weeks, the massive flood. We are impacted as a company. Uh, also, we are building the Ajokuta Kaduna Kanu pipeline, the first section of it, which uh, starts from uh, Kogi, uh, Ajokuta, all the way to the boundary of Kaduna State. And I can tell you, in the past two weeks, we've not been able to move our pipes, not been able to move our trucks. Uh, it's very impactful. But let us also put it in perspective. When flood of uh, this magnitude, of course, the, 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 what will happen is that it impacts oil and gas production because the facilities are affected. And don't forget that a major part of the gas that goes, that feeds NLNG, uh, is basically coming from associated gas. Associated gas means gas that is produced uh, with the crude oil, uh, you know, when crude oil is produced also. What it means also is that when you are constrained with oil production, it affects the gas production. That's also why we are having less volumes also going to an LNG right now because of the fact that oil production is affected. Uh, uh, quite a large chunk of production is shot in at the moment by many producers. And I know clearly that NLNG must be struggling. So it's very impactful.
Right, uh, quite, quite interesting and uh, quite a lot of uh, problems there. Hopefully we're able to solve the, the, the issues because this is actually nat a natural uh, disaster, talking about flooding. But now let me, let me take you back uh, to uh, that award that you, you recently received. You, you've, you've done a lot in this uh, industry and uh, coming at this time, how did this uh, make you feel receiving this uh, prestigious award? Uh, thank you. Um, I'm quite elated. Uh, first of all, uh, I give great uh, thanks and honor to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamedou Buhari, uh, for deeming me fit to receive this honor. Uh, this honor is not just for me, it is also for the industry, because it shows that the nation uh, appreciates what some of us have been doing to make Nigeria move from the point of view of oil and gas production. Um, for me, I can tell you very clearly, I'm, I'm quite elated. Uh, of course, uh, years back, I received uh, an honor, which is the award of uh, National Productivity Award. Uh, but this particular award of uh, Commander of the Order of the Niger actually crowns it all. I am happy. but. Like, uh, I look at it positively, and I say it is actually a message to me and others to work harder in order to impact positively on our country, Nigeria. It's only by all of us working together in different sectors that we can make a difference. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, quite interesting. But um, talking about making a difference, uh, what, what are you doing uh, on the corporate social responsibility front? Um, the, thank you once more. The bedrock uh, of oil serve uh, is our strong corporate social responsibility framework. I can tell you this. Um, our activities, and what made us as a company, grew from establishing and running activities in the Niger Delta. We are primarily based in Port Harcourt, and we've executed projects across the entire Niger Delta, including Abia and Nemo. And I can tell you clearly, starting from the 90s into the 2000s, with all the challenges that came in the 2000s in the Niger Delta, it became imperative that it's, it's necessary to engage the communities. Non-engagement of communities is, uh, is always disastrous because uh, they are critical stakeholders. And how do you engage? It is about knowing what is required to improve their lives. This oil comes from somewhere. And wherever it comes from, and we have activities, definitely it is important for us to get involved. Oil South, as a company, has continued over the past 25 years or more uh, engaging the community. We have built various facilities for communities, uh, from town halls uh, to provision of education to water. Uh, but most importantly, to engaging the communities in such a way that we provide employment in areas where we work, including with areas where we are based. Um, you may wish to know also that we, as a company, has sponsored the building of uh, a cardiothoracic hospital, specialized hospital. Uh, that is uh, a 28-bed uh, hospital, and this. Uh, out of which 14 is a 14 ICU hospital, uh, hospital. And this hospital has been, in the past uh, seven months when it opened, we have been offering uh, free uh, services as far as uh, certain aspects of the, of the medical system or medical treatment is concerned. And I take an example. In May this year, uh, the hospital broke a record by actually conducting eight uh, open heart surgeries. These open heart surgeries were done and made possible because of the interlink between the foundation that I run, Sarumekokosa Foundation, which is primarily sponsored by OXR, and uh, a foundation based in College Station, Texas in the US called Voom Foundation, whereby the cardiologists came in, interfaced with Nigerian cardiologists and executed this. You may wish to know that uh, first week of November, we plan to carry out another set of program that will lead to between 14 and 20 open heart surgeries being conducted, out of which 
uh, half of them would be pediatric cases, which is unprecedented again. So we are giving back because we understand that the only way it makes a sense to exist in a society is to integrate, whether as business or as individuals, and make a difference. And that's the only way the country can do. Thank you. Yeah, quite a lot you do in the uh, health uh, sector there. But, you know, now that you've, you've gotten this uh, prestigious award, now this honor, what more can we expect going forward? You can be sure that more will come. All I pray is that God gives, uh, gives me and gives all of us uh, good health and uh, long enough life to make an impact. Uh, definitely, we will continue to expand the hospital. Uh, we also, in the area of education, we built uh, a secondary school at the Dem Irene Okosa Memorial Convent, and we are expanding that as we speak. We're about to build uh, a 700 bed dormitory that will make the, the school uh, more efficient in admitting uh, more, more students. And we're also working to be able to review their curriculum in order to make sure that it's fit for purpose and support them in ICT uh, uh, training and, 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 and scope. So basically, we'll continue to do that. In addition, we are still engaging the communities uh, to see what we can do more in order to, to, to improve the lives of people as much as we can with what we have. So definitely, we are not uh, stopping. So far as we are in business, we we'll continue to engage and uh, look for avenues to, 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 to impact positive. Fantastic. And we'll keep tracking your progress from uh, over here. Thank you so much, Engineer Mika Kwasa, Chairman, uh, All Serve uh, Limited, and congratulations again. Thank you very much for having me uh, on your wonderful program. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, so we've been talking uh, uh, to uh, engineer Emeka Okwasa, the chairman of All Serve Limited, drilling down what's happening uh, in the oil industry now.